in any industrial plant control valves are at the heart of any control loop and the number one problem in control valves is nothing but cavitation in control valves so as requested all the cavitation solutions are combined in one place so it's a one stop solution to all the cavitation problems so let's get started there's only one solution for preventing cavitation in control valve that is go for multi-stage trim this is an absolutely wrong understanding cavitation has multiple solutions when you want to avoid it one of them is either you try to change the process parameters or you try to do valve modifications this can be further segregated now mostly the discussion always happens with respect to the valve modification so that is what we'll start with first we'll go with the waterfall example which is an amazing way to understand the valve modification which is done so imagine here's your dam and here's the water falling from it and here's the person standing just below it now for the second case imagine it is in a stage stepwise manner and the water is falling and here's a person standing now tell me out of both the cases what do you think which is going to hurt less it is usually going to be the case two, right? Why? Because we are reducing the pressure comparatively as compared to the case number one. Now, how does this example actually help in understanding valve cavitation and how can we avoid that? Let's do that. So here's our valve and here's our pressure drop that happens across the valve. Let the pressure drop across the valve P1 be 100 PSI and the pressure drop p2 after the pressure drop let it be 75 psi now what happens here is let the vapor pressure be 55 psi g so the curve is going below the vapor pressure so cavitation will happen now we try to have two valves in series smaller valves so they'll have a smaller pressure drop across it and now the first valve had the pressure drop of 50 percent which is 150 percent is 50 psi g here the recovery was 25 percent and 25 percent was lost so it's in a similar fashion here we have p1 as 100 psig there is going to be this drop divided between both the valves so it's going to be 25 percent so here it's going to be 75 psig and the recovery also will be divided between the two valves so 25 percent divided will be 12.5 12.5 so here 75 plus 12.5 is 87.5 psig so we get the first recovery and again the pressure drop is going to be of 25 percent so 25 percent of 87.5 is 62.5 psig and again the recovery of 12 percent 12.5 which is 75 psig now the amazing thing starts here if you notice here the p1 and the p2 that is the pressure at the inlet is same right if you see 100 psig 100 psig the pressure at the outlet is also same it is 75 psig and 75 psig however did you notice that the pressure curve in the second case did not touch the vapor pressure so cavitation did not happen isn't it great and this is because of this amazing factor called as giving time for the pressure recovery to happen so this is how we try to modify the valves or the arrangement of the valves in such a way that we can prevent cavitation but is it not difficult to maintain two valves and the pressure drop across them is there an idea that we can merge them together Hmm, that sounds like an interesting question, right? Yes, we can do that. There are some special kind of valves that are made. What they do inside the valve is in the trim, they make holes into it so that the pressure drop will happen eventually. And then the something was born, which is called a single stage trim and multi stage trim. So depending upon how severe is the cavitation, we either have single stage trim or multi stage trim. Now, for cavitation solutions, what we have learned right now is there are process parameters and valve modifications. We look first for valve modifications, which is first is changing the valve design. Example, butterfly, as we said in the previous example, would have just one point of pressure drop. However, globe will have multiple points. So it's better to go for globe then. The second thing is stellated trim. Because stellated trim is basically where you just harden the trim material if the cavitation is not that severe, so it can sustain the damage of cavitation for a long period of time. If that's not working, then you go for multiple valves. But if multiple valves is an issue with you, you can go for stage pressure drop trim, which can further be divided into single stage and multi-stage trim now eventually we'll see the process parameters so for process parameters they can be divided into five solutions but you can remember this with a very simple acronym which is error e r r o r the first e here stands for elevate the pressure p1 and p2 so here's your control valve and now we've learned about the pressure drop curve so here's your vapor pressure it's very clear that cavitation is going to happen here right because the pressure drop is going beyond which is 50 psig and the vapor pressure is 55 psig now what do we do is can we try to move this entire solution near to the pump and see what happens so when i move near to the pump i'll have the same pressure drop curve but 
the P1 is now elevated by 10 PSIG. So my P1 is 110 PSIG. I have the same drop of 50 PSIG. So I'll get here 60 because 110 minus 50 is 60 PSIG. And the amazing thing is look at the vapor pressure curve. It was 55, right? So it is going above. So already we have saved cavitation without adding anything, just moving the control valve, which anyways we have to install. Isn't it amazing? Now, if you compare both the areas, you would see that even though the pressure drop is same, the cavitation is not happening in the second case while it's happening in the first case. Now, let us look at the second amazing solution to it. As we said, the acronym was error. The second one is stands for R, right? So R stands for reduce the downstream pressure P2. So imagine you have two valves with having the same pressure drop curve. So both of them, what you do is you just change the downstream pressure. The P1 remains the same. What happens here is when we have both of them have the same vapor pressure curve and the same pressure drop happening to them, but the downstream pressure here is significantly reduced. But why do we do that? Let us look at that. Engineers have realized that here at this portion, when the liquid or the fluid is changing into its liquid state, the bubbles are going to burst, which is the most harmful thing to the valve. So engineers thought, can we just avoid this one thing? So can I just avoid this damage? Yes, that is possible. And that is what we do here. At this stage, we don't allow it to come to its liquid state. So the bubbles won't burst. And this will significantly reduce the damage to the valve. This phenomenon is called as flashing. Yes, it has effects on the trim, but it is far significantly lesser as compared to cavitation. And eventually down the line, it will cavitate. So you have to keep the piping there very strong so you can make thicker piping, but the trim can be saved, which is of a higher cost and higher criticality. Now let us look at the third amazing solution to it. What is that? With our acronym, let's go. The third one again stands as R. So R is reducing the temperature of the fluid. Yes, in this what we do is, imagine here's your pressure drop. Now instead of always playing with the pressure P1, P2, why not we play with vapor pressure? So what if we cool the vapor pressure, but is that possible? No, but we can cool the fluid, right? So if we cool the fluid, the vapor pressure is again going to change and you're going to have a vapor pressure now here because the liquid is cooled enough. So at this point of time, what happens is you will not have any cavitation happening to it. Is this possible? Some solutions are you can, you know, remove the insulation which is kept uh, to have the valve to be kept warm. Sometimes it's not that required. You can ask with the process department or move the valve to a colder region during the process. If that is process oriented, feasibility is present. Otherwise, you won't be able to do that. The next final thing is for process parameters, as we said, ERROR. Now we have is O which stands for outside gas injection. This is a very simple method where basically you have a valve and a pressure drop happening and you have the bubbles which are bursting, which is the troublesome thing. So you try to put some inert gas into it. So basically that does a cushion effect and tries to reduce this effect overall. But this is rarely used by the industry. It is mentioned in all the books like Bella Liptak, etc. But it is rarely a practical solution in the industrial world. Now we look at the final one, which is my mo most personal example, which is R. That R stands for recheck the process input. What happened with me was, even though it might be a funny thing, but I was working at all the calculations and I was not able to find a proper solution to cavitation. And I understood what could be the reason. So I went to the process department to ask and I realized that basically the temperature had to be in degree Fahrenheit, but by mistake it was mentioned in degree Celsius. So if you're not able to find solutions to cavitation, just check the input document from process is correct. All the process parameters, the pressure drop, temperature, etc. Maybe that could solve your problem. So I hope you found the video valuable. In conclusion, I can say is the parameters can be divided into these five basic categories. Now we'll go to elevate the pressure, which stands for E. R stands for reduce the downstream pressure. R stands for reducing the temperature of fluid, outside gas injection, and finally rechecking the process data. I hope you've liked this video. Next Saturday, we'll meet again with another new amazing video. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Happy learning.